What you looking at? The building owner asked. The gauge glass, I replied, staring intently at the boiler. Why? he asked. It's going to tell me what's wrong with your boiler, I answered. It's surprising to me how many steam boiler gauge glasses are dirty in the rooms I visit. This ingenious little device can tell you a lot about how the steam boiler operates and how to troubleshoot it. Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel. I'm your host, Ray Wolfarth. Today we're discussing why gauge glass maintenance is worthwhile. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a newbie, I hope you learned something new from the video. What does the gauge glass tell you? I'm glad you asked. These are the things I look for on a gauge glass. Dirty brown water or dirt floating in the gauge glass water tells me a couple of things. The total dissolved solids, or TDS, inside the boiler may be high. This could cause bouncing water levels and nuisance trips of the low water cutoff. It could also indicate excessive corrosion in the piping. Both causes need to be investigated and addressed. Clean, clear water scares me more than the dirty brown water. This could signify the system is losing water or steam and replacing it with fresh water. Makeup water can quickly destroy a steam boiler. Look for and repair any steam or water leaks. A water meter on the makeup water pipe is a good idea. It will let you know if the system is leaking. If I notice water trickling down from the top of the sight glass, it could indicate carryover, which means the water leaves the boiler with the steam, reducing the boiler's efficiency. The carryover water causes the steam to condense too quickly, overloading the steam traps in the piping and causing the system to stop heating. When I see something floating on top of the water in the gauge glass, this could be oil, which is lighter than water and will float on the surface. Oil covers the boiler water with a film, preventing the steam bubbles from bursting through. The boiler water starts rocking back and forth, like waves in the ocean. The waving motion could trip the low water cutoff or create carryover. How do we get oil in the boiler water, you may wonder? The oil may be from threading oil from pipes or nipples or pipe work that was recently done, or even from boiler components which had leftover oil from the factory when they were machined. The oil has to be removed to allow the boiler to operate properly. This is sometimes challenging as the oil will stick to the internal boiler surfaces. I've had success by building the steam pressure in the boiler, shutting off the burner, and doing a surface blowdown. I like to see where the burner or feed water pumps start or stop. Some techs mark the gauge glass, but I'm not a big fan, as the levels change when the water is cool and when it's warm. I'm looking to see whether the water level gets too low before shutting off the burner or starting the feed water pump. I also look to see if the water level gets too high, which can lead to carryover. Sometimes when looking at the gauge glass, you can't see the water level. Is the gauge glass empty or flooded? Remember the gauge glass shows you the water level inside the boiler. Neither condition is good. Verify both valves are open. A way to tell if the gauge glass is empty or full is a trick I learned from Dan Hallahan. Hold a pencil behind the gauge glass. If the gauge glass is full, the pencil will appear to be broken at an angle. If it's empty, the pencil will look intact, straight. It works great. Now that you see the diagnostic value of the gauge glass, you have three choices when you see a dirty one on the next job. You can clean it, replace it, or ignore it. I prefer replacing it over cleaning because of several reasons. The top of the glass sometimes gets paper thin as the steam erodes it. It could break when handling, or worse, it could break when no one was there, shooting steam and water into the boiler room. The rubber gauge glass washers dry out, and they sometimes allow steam to leak. Should you decide to replace the gauge glass, you will need a new gauge glass, two rubber washers, two brass friction rings, and a gauge glass cutter, because the gauge glass you purchase 
is always longer than the space it fits into. I wish they would standardize on that. Close the top and bottom brass valve so you don't get burnt. Remove the vertical brass rods on either side of the gauge glass. To size a replacement gauge glass, I measure between the top of the upper nut and the bottom of the lower brass nut. There is some space above the nut on the top to allow you to fit the gauge glass inside. I prefer the red line gauge glass as it makes it easier to see the water line. When cleaning the gauge glass, be careful removing it, as it could break easily. I take it to a slop sink, squirt some soap inside. To clean the inside of the gauge glass, I found these small brushes at Harbor Freight Shops, and they work great. In the past, I've used a straightened metal clothes hanger with a bit of paper towel wrapped around the end. After, I rinse the inside and outside of the tube. When replacing the gauge glass, you start by sliding the brass nuts on, each facing opposite. Next comes the brass friction rings. The last part are the rubber washers. Be sure to leave about an inch of glass above and below the rubber washers. Lift the gauge glass into the top of the valve. You should be able to slide the bottom into the lower valve and let it drop down. Carefully slide the rubber washers and nuts down over the threads and tighten slowly. Replace the vertical brass rods and open the valves. You should see water inside. Hope this helps you on your next steam boiler service call. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more expert advice and tips. Thanks for watching. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com is focused on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is FireIceHeat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. My boiler books are available on Amazon. My technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective and I'll see you on the next case.